encourage your complete cooperation. Send your roses when they think you need to smile. I can't control myself because I don't know how. When they love me for it, honestly, I'll be here for a while. So give them blood, blood, gallons of the stuff. Give them all that they can drink and it will never be enough. So give them blood, blood, blood. Grab a glass because there's going to be a flood. A celebrated man amongst the gurneys. They can fix me proper with a bit of luck. The doctors and the nurses, they adore me so, but it's really quite alarming, cause I'm such an awful fuck. I gave you blood, blood, gallons of the stuff I gave you all that you can drink, and it has never been enough. I gave you blood, blood, blood. Somebody said that it's anti-transphobia day. Is this true? I have to I have to look this up. How many I mean, there is a 50% chance. It is! It is International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia, and Transphobia. Well, well, well. That's too bad. <laughs> uh wow, that is very coincidental. I mean, half the calendar is at this point is dedicated to the the the, the almighty pride flag, so. I suppose it's not that coincidental, but it is somewhat funny because this is a specific day. So, I mean, is being, he's not even like transgender, right? He's non binary. Is that technically, I mean, they would protest that they are, in fact, uh, discriminated against, but is, is that even a transphobia to, to not, to make fun of someone who's non binary? I guess we'll find out. Uh, so I, I have, um, last Friday, I I told the people that there was a a smidgen of a hint, a little itsy bitsy hint in the last Jim Quisition, which airs every Monday, uh, that he would be doing a stream to talk about, or not a stream, but a video uh, dedicated to his loss of subscribers. And since I'm a bit of a fan of, or I used to be a fan of the Jim Quisition, let me give you a quick rundown. Back in the day, early 2010s, Jim Sterling was a run-of-the-mill games journalist. He was one of the people who would churn out those articles on your IGNs or whatever the fuck. I don't remember what she, he worked for. I think it was a, um, I want to say it was the the Yahtzee uh, magazine, the Zero Punctual Escapist. Was it Escapist? It, anyways, he just wrote articles initially, and then he got kicked out of that group i think because he kept picking fights with his uh with the publishing companies so a game company would do something he didn't like he would write an article about it and then the escapists would suffer um as a result of this negative uh of, of this ne negative article because the game publishing companies can choose to tell any of these game journalist companies that they're not going to give them sneak peeks, they're not going to let them tour their headquarters, they're not going to give them review copies, and that those are financial means that game publishing companies can use to force the game publishers, the review publishers, to play nice with them. And Jim Sterling said, I'm not going to play by that. I'm going to go make my own publication. He called it the Jimquisition. And then he said, you know what, I'll do videos about my reviews of games. And he started publishing that to YouTube. And that was called The Jimquisition. Uh, and he has faithfully, like every week pretty much, almost without fail, every week put out a video um, on Monday uh, talking about, if not a specific game, then something in games, journalism, or the video game industry he did not like. And he has changed his reviews quite a bit. Uh, over time, uh, depending on his mood. And it used to be kind of weird. Like, he had this weird, like, black and red, like, like fashy kind of aesthetic. He looked like, you know, someone... Because he had the podium in front of him, and he had the big leather jacket and the red glasses. He looked like someone who'd be banging on a podium and yelling about games. 
And I think that's what he was going for. And then he started piling garbage into his room. He covered his entire room in toys and boglins. And he started doing these skits. And whenever a creator starts doing very heavy skit stuff, that's how that's a very good way for you to figure out that that person hates their fucking job. Because you can tell it with AVGN. AVGN just... he I don't think he likes reviewing old consoles and old games i think he likes doing stupid skits and the in the when he talks about his reviews he talks about like the the bugs bunny ones where he's like dressed up as bugs bunny and taking a dump on someone's face like those are his favorite ones because they are like the most i guess the most fun to make but they're so awful <laughs> they're, they're so terrible and i've never watched nostalgia critic but i got the sense talking about abg and, and uh jimquisition in the past that uh, Nostalgia Critic is also very guilty of this, where instead of just doing the fucking thing that people are subscribed to hear, he gets bored with his own content, and he has to, like, do skits, and they're, like, universally fucking despised because they're not funny. So Jim started doing these skits, and there was a very serious breakaway a couple years ago where uh, he fucked up his back, and he started doing opioids. And I think he's being seriously addicted to painkillers, Ever since. He's a big fat fuck, right? So chances of back injury are pretty high. And after that, for whatever reason, even though he had slipped a disc in his back and needed back surgery multiple times, and was addicted to painkillers, <clears throat> he decided to try and join amateur wrestling. And nobody, almost nobody who plays video games, except except like Dark Side Phil, gives a fuck about wrestling. Like, like... Ralph and Darkside Phil and Jim Sterling are like the only people I know of who care about wrestling. It's the weirdest shit. It's like a w super weird niche. You have to be in the right mindset to like wrestling, I guess. But I don't think most people like it, especially not people who play video games. So it's like you have to, when he starts doing his amateur wrestling shit at the beginning, he would talk about say like, hey, I'm doing this WWE thing or not, you know, amateur wrestling. Come watch. And that never, like, that didn't work. So he started putting clips of his wrestling footage into the show, and those sucked. And that didn't work. It used to be at the beginning. So, like, back in the day, I used to seriously watch, or put on the, the side, uh, a playlist of all the Jimquisitions. And I would just have them play at random over and over again. And I would just use them as background noise. And I would know, I listened to him so many times, I would know exactly what he says right before he would cut to a random clip of wrestling and it would be like ptsd or like uh conditioning um like pavlov conditioning where i would hear that phrase jim sterling says that phrase i have to fucking alt tab over to the tab and skip past the wrestling footage because it's gay and so i think that didn't work so he started putting it like the front and in, in like random bits of the video and then he's changed his entire twitter account to look like a wrestling account, and it just went on and on and on, and then he formed his own fucking wrestling ring, and someone messaged me on Matrix again because they knew I was streaming, and I had my fucking Matrix open, so it's going to ting. And, <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> and then I guess at some point he decided, not only am I going to not talk about games, not only am I not going to like talk about... like Because he used to actually enjoy shit, I think. He's like, not only am I not going to talk about games as if I enjoy them, not only am I going to insert random wrestling footage throughout the video, not only am I going to talk constantly about communism and anti-capitalism and transphobia and feminism and all this shit, uh, I'm going to transition myself. And so in February, Jim came out as James Stefani Sterling, a non-binary queen. And uh, someone pointed this out on like Local Farm or something, but... For whatever reason, Jim Sterling has become psychologically attached to the cheapest, ugliest wig that has ever been donned on a person's fucking head. So it's just a, a, a genuinely appalling experience to look at him. And I think he's gotten so fucking lazy. He just pays someone to do his editing for him. So he doesn't even stand at the podium and bash, you know, and do the, the gesticulating. Most of his video is just like pan and zooms of, of stock footage, literal stock footage, almost all of them stock footage of, like, random young women, because I guess that's what gets his pee-pee hard. And it, it, his show sucks. 
<laughs> and it's not surprising that he has lost subscribers after coming out. And no matter what he says in this video, he has been losing subscribers for a while, uh, for months. So it's not just that he came out. It's that his content sucks and he's now like visually abhorrent to people. So I promise on Friday that if this next stream that came out today or next video that came out today was full of salt like I expected it would be because he had just dipped under 900,000 subscribers. He's going backwards. Um, I would do a impromptu live stream and I would talk about it to the great people who subscribe to my channel. Uh, so here we are. Um, I have this set up skewed and desaturated because uh, I don't want to get caught with like content ID and taken down. This is another thing. Like I'm obviously going to pause and comment over the entire video. Um, I don't think Jim Sterling of all people would like DMCA me. He might report me for bullying, I guess, but he's not going to DMCA me. I'm just afraid of content ID. So sorry. The video is not important at all. If you are listening to this and only listening to this, you are missing out on precisely nothing except visual eyesore. There is something about the way that his editor Justin and non-binary lover uh, does when editing that just makes you nause nauseous. It's like um, seasickness the way that the editing is done, and he doesn't give a fuck. I've I've added Jim on Twitter and said like, look, can you please change your editing so that it's less horrible, and he refuses. Um, I guess because he doesn't want to pay anyone better than Justin because Justin's like his fuck toy anyways. Uh, but I've listened to about, it's about 30 minutes long. I've sat through about 20 minutes already and I expected, um, that at some point in that 20 minutes, he would kind of ease off the salt. He would, you know, chill out and talk about things more productive. But after being salty for 20 minutes, he then suddenly says, now time to talk about transphobia. And it doesn't stop. So I'm like, okay, I guess uh, I'll do a live reaction to the last 10. So just a, a warning. I've already seen most of this, but I, I think that it will be funny throughout. Uh, and on that note, let us begin. It is time to celebrate the milestone for the ages! The under 900,000 subscriber special! <laughs> oh! Massive congrats! Oh my god, I'm sorry. I muted myself. Uh, <laughs> I like how, in that, even in that clip, he cannot hide how angry he is. I think he's much more angrier than he's letting on. So he's trying to be performative to show that he's actually genuinely upset. And it, 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 it really, I think, tattles that he's actually super pissed about it. Because you would expect him to be super professional about this and be like, yeah, I've lost a lot of subscribers, but... You know, it happens, and let's look at the reasons why that might be, and what we can do as a society to change our perspectives on trans creators and whatever. No. From the get-go, he is, like, literally wringing his fucking hands just to show people that, no, actually, I am pissed off about this. And uh, he has, throughout the video, random people he does shit with, I guess, to, like, come in and congratulate him, and they're all, like, his personal friends, and it's really pathetic. Congratulations from all of us here at Ashens to James Stephanie Sterling for... Managing to get under 900,000 subscribers. Do you know what? I honestly didn't think you'd do it for a while. When I first saw that pink leather jacket, well, I thought it was just too fabulous. I thought people are going to subscribe just to see the jacket. But no, turns out people are blind as well as stupid. So congratulations on this most auspicious of occasions. So that that's just the message that if you unsubscribe from Jim, you're stupid and blind because you have no sense of taste. I like how even his friends are angry. They're angry for him. And that's great. That really adds a lot to this. Sorry about this lot. I haven't got any boglins. Wow, less than 900,000 subscribers. Could you ever believe it? We truly have come a long way from 927,000 subscribers. You know, it feels like only February since we last had such a number. 
because it was February. In the time since, we've managed to successfully bleed subscribers at a rate one could only call hemorrhagical. Seriously though, I want to say a deep and personal thank you to all of my unsubscribers. I wouldn't be where I am today without your withdrawal of support, and I want you to know that every unsubscription matters. Remember, if you click the bell for notifications... Uh, he, he complains about YouTube here in a second, but I, I mean, I, I want to make sure that it's not me, right? It's not just me hoping that he's salty. He genuinely comes across as super fucking upset, right? I'm not like fantasizing about this like he actually comes across as genuinely angry at each and every person who dropped out of his channel he's seething <laughs> i really wish i couldn't sub <laughs> well youtube will barely notify you of my content anyway but click on it again just to really make sure you don't get any. At the risk of sounding parasocial i consider you all to be my family this is great. This part's coming. I'm just warning you. Pay attention to this. This is funny. In that I don't talk to you and you won't see me again. As my living partner, Gerard Butler, can attest, family has always mattered to me. And since my own family has been fairly casual and unsurprised about recent changes in my life, I've had to get my feelings of familial abandonment somewhere else. And thank fuck there's always been YouTube.com for negative reinforcement and a constant, overwhelming sense of punishment for literally doing anything whether you're doing the same type of content and getting called repetitive or doing new content that won't get shared because repetition is what gets rewarded I wish I could point to one decision event or situation that led to such a dramatic decrease in subscribers over such a short time but the simple fact of the matter is this we did it all together I kept publishing videos you kept on subscribing it's as simple as that. Of course, based on one's existing opinion of the content and channel, you can come up with all sorts of personally sourced reasons for the drop, and Lord fucking knows I've seen every single confidently expressed theory. So he goes on to say that you're welcome to uh, guess why he's losing subscribers the way he is. And, uh, you're welcome to your own theories, but he has his own. And unfortunately, he does not say here. He actually goes over each and every theory as to why people might be unsubscribing to him and i think he saves the best for last so uh let us continue one thing i know though such a sudden extreme and incredibly well timed drop in numbers definitely has nothing to do with any single thing that might have happened the exact day the mass subscriber exodus started on a platform with historic hostility towards anyway the subscribers dropped off because i talk about capitalism too much at least that's what i've been told when i was just re so theory a he talks about capitalism too much. And to be fair, this is a very good theory because he never shuts the fuck up about it. He constantly has to remind you. Even when he's on a good streak and he's talking about things that are sensible, he then just drives off the cliff and says, like, you know what? We should abolish the monetary system and give people handouts. That way everyone will have access to video games and there won't be microtransactions. Forcing the belief that Electronic Arts is a bad video game company that does bad things, I was cheered and applauded and carried around town in a big chair and given the key to the city. When I started to explain how, and why Electronic Arts is bad. I started getting side eyes. And then I dared say the word capitalism out loud because you can intimate it, but you can't say the word. Cause then too many people worked out that the show is about how capitalism is bad. And then that's when I did too much politics. Well, that and whenever I've acknowledged I, I like that part. It's like a retcon. It's sort of like, you know those 10 years of Gemquisitions you've been listening to or people talk passionately about a video game or something like that? That's actually all coded reference to capitalism being bad. It's like um, the uh, Rinkowski brothers, the, the Matrix people, retconning the Matrix to be an allegory towards transitioning, which is just bullshit. It's like, no, it used to be about video games, dude. A woman exists in video games. That's two politics as well. Repetition Repetition is of course a big criticism of the show, a genuine and fair reason to unsubscribe if you don't like hearing how capitalism is ruining everything every single week and who does. Once again, this was a less of an issue in 2020, 2019, 2018, 2017, 2016, 2015 and 2014, but I'm acutely aware that telling you EA is bad and microtransactions suck is an easier pill to swallow every week than telling you Bobby Kotick will have made thousands of more dollars that he doesn't need by the time you're done watching this video, even if you turn this video off right now. 
I like how uh, I mentioned the the Matrix, and then he cuts to um, a still from the Matrix for the pill allegory. It's very nice. There are many fair reasons to not want to watch my show or support the channel or whatever. I barely want to do all those things myself. And only the fair reasons are the reasons that so many subscribers went away so fast and so recently. We did at one point wonder if it had anything to do with coming out visibly as trans on the notoriously trans hostile YouTube.com, but I've been assured by gamers and YouTube commenters the world over that suddenly losing 2,000 subs the exact day I came out and a further 2,000 with every subsequent post is sheer coincidence. No, it's because I said the word capitalism too much. Uh, it, it can be multiple factors, in case you're wondering. Um, but I brought this up. Uh, let's look at the show from late. He, he, he keeps hammering. He lost 2,000 subscribers the very day that he uh, came out. But you can look at the stats. Starting in August, he had essentially negative or uh, zero growth. And then in September 28th, he loses subscribers for the first time. Stagnates completely. November, it drops another 2,000 over two weeks. And then by December, it's down uh, 4,000 from where it was at its peak. It climbs a little because during the new year, Jim puts out his top 10 best and worst video games. And those reviews are his most popular by far. Um, so he rebounded a little bit when he actually set aside his uh, psychopathic ranting about capitalism to talk about video games again. And then from that point on, it is not from February, it is from January 10th, the week after his top 10 worst and best video game streams, or, or videos, uh, that he is on a steady decline. The, um, the idea that this, February 10th, is where it starts declining is fictitious. You can see with your own eyes that it starts at the beginning of the year and it starts a little bit before then but it rebounds a bit and then it starts dropping off because he but only after uh he he transitions so now everything that's lost after this belongs to the transition it's not in anything else even though you can look at the fucking numbers and see it for yourself that it was happening before well that and the creepy fucking advert edits i've been putting into the show which again that one is fair time we're going to skip past this when it comes up, by the way. Sounds hard here on the gym position. Anyway, here's a word from our latest sponsor. He legit doesn't know what the fuck to do with his content anymore, so he literally just downloads old uh, advertisements and makes sound effects over them and then puts them in, in the video. So I'm just going to spare you that. Box cornflakes. we got to have a bowl of Cocoa Pops. I'd top that with onions. Oh, uh, why, it's special celebrity co-host, Beanie Tuesday! I'd put onions on that. You've done that bit. Jim, it is such a pleasure to- Is that man a midget, or is Jim Sterling really fucking tall? Jim Sterling looks like he's six foot six next to this midget. To be here on such a momentous 900,000 subscriber special. <laughs> it's great. Really great. Just... Doesn't think we're on it. We've had so much fun over the years here on the Gymquisition. <laughs> Why don't we take a look back on how we got here? The best of the Gymquisition is the title card. I'm actually wondering, do you guys think if I posted British uh, this, like a still of this with Jim standing next to a title card that says under 900,000 subscribers on it. Do you think if I sent that to British women posting their L's and they reposted that, that Jim would take that as a win? Like, oh, I got I got put on the, the British women posting their L's fail blog. I guess that is, um, uh, that's validating. That's so gender euphoric. Okay, this sucks, by the way. At some point in 2019 or 2020, um, he started really railing on Bethesda because of Fallout 76, and he'll dance to this rave song with his crab hands saying Bethesda is a bad video game company, and he calls it the fuck Bethesda dance, and he'll do this for two minutes straight. This is also something that I have to skip past because it's awful. And he loves it for some reason. He thinks this is the best thing he's ever done. What is that, eh? Have we got anything else good? Listen, when my agent gave me this gig, they said that this was momentous. That's why I used the word momentous. It I have is. A, 
It is. We're at the Royal Opera House. Okay. Okay. This is what it looks like. They've always got a green screen here. Right. Right. Are they actually in the same room? Is this like two green screen footages put next to the other? Whatever. This guy's not funny. Okay. And, and he's ruining my this song. This is what it looks like. Fuck They've always off. got a green screen here. Fuck off, Midge. Right. We right. little Midge. Okay. Bow-legged it's dwarf. Shed. It's not a shed. Skipping I've seen better game. sheds. Is I was over building or growing anything here because it fucking sucks. Aside from the fact that queer content is buried, suppressed, and demonetized to such a degree it's not even up for debate, it's a literal fact. This, uh, the video is reversed, but I'll read it for you. SNL producer and filmmaker are the latest to accuse YouTube of anti-LGBT bias. The 12 complainants in the class action lawsuit say an algorithm that restricts content is an attempt to push them off the platform. Um, so they're claiming oppression, even though every multinational company in the entire fucking world supports LGBT rights and posts gay rainbow shit on their fucking Twitter timelines, they are still oppressed because the ad algorithm is not promoting their content enough. I'm sure that it has nothing to do with the fact that their content sucks. This is the great thing about machine learning and AI, is that now the AI realizes, beep boop, this content is shit, nobody fucking cares, and then it demotes your shit, because it sucks, and then they complain about it, and they file a lawsuit. Then they have to walk over to the robot, and he'll beg for his life, they're like, no sir, you gotta, you gotta eat the, you gotta take the pause load, Mr. Algorithm Bot, you gotta fucking promote this shit. Many mid-tier YouTube channels have felt pretty buried lately. My own videos struggle to reach even the people who want to see them. It seems every week I get more people telling me they only know about my videos now from Twitter or Patreon. Since about the middle of last year, when I started calling out systemic abuse at game companies, most notably the sex abuse at Ubisoft, the channel's discoverability appeared to plummet. And while that may genuinely have been a coincidence, it only served to further my belief that YouTube is a site that relies on negative reinforcement to scare content into being created rather than encourage it that's an important note um jim has claimed ever since he put out a video um that was nothing it was not a regular jim acquisition i think that they still feature it very prominently on his channel uh but if you go there it will be like it, it's just a bunch of people either people directly or people reading messages from alleged employees at activision I think it was Activision saying that they had been uh, sexually assaulted and shit at the workplace. And that was he, Jim believes that that video um, bombed his SEO. Maybe that company threatened YouTube to like remove it from the algorithm or whatever and hurt his channel. Uh, and that may be true. Uh, I'll give him the benefit of a doubt and say that might be true. But it may also just be that people who subscribe for video game content. Uh, don't want to hear people talk about being raped, and you can say that's a, a fault of the, you know, the people not caring enough or whatever, but that's a distinct possibility. It's a platform of constant negative reinforcement, and I'm not just talking about how its algorithm favors conflict and misery over any other type of discourse. The algorithm changes and the bar for success shifts so much that some creators sound borderline superstitious when talking of ways to appease it. All I know is this, whenever I felt punished or put down in my job, it's almost always because something happened on YouTube. Not my Patreon, not social, except losing Twitter followers by talking about wrestling too much, which is another fair point but youtube is where i feel constantly miserable and at a dead fucking end and i felt this way for years of course so yeah somebody mentioned maybe he shouldn't put certain words in uh the title of his videos as anywhere in the videos um i've i've learned watching the um trisha paytas and ethan klein podcast thing called frenemies that uh they're very particular to refer to um sexual assault as essay which always makes me think they're saying friend in Spanish. Like I wrote my essay. I, like I had an essay last night. Um, but I mean, it's an abbreviation for sexual assault to bypass the fact that YouTube will actively demote and potentially even demonetize content that talks about sexual assault and, and uh, rape and shit. Also, I've made no secret about it. I have a theory that it is in some ways deliberate on Google's part. Not as in they're personally targeting me by making my videos impossible to fucking find, but after talking with other mid-level creators, I openly wonder if YouTube's trying to get people to jump before their 
had pushed to get them off of Google's notoriously expensive to maintain YouTube.com so only the biggest and most successful channels are there to take up resources. Hi, Starling. This is Evil Uno of Dark Order, or AEW, here to tell you congratulations on 900,000 subscribers on YouTube. I don't know if you know this, but by my math, that's near a million. That's a lot of people. Congratulations to you. Craig, you bastard. Did you tell him the number was going up or down? Up or down? You stupid, stupid bastard. You see what I mean? The the, the skits and... Uh, when he's just, like, angry, it's funny. It doesn't matter if it's about video games or, or his channel or YouTube. It's It's funny. But then he's like, oh, I'm actually, I'm, it's not just people, like, listening to me be angry. It's like, I'm actually a comedian. I'm a multifaceted individual and everyone loves everything that I do. Let me also, uh, sketch comedy routines with my dwarf friend, uh, between butt-fucking sessions. We need to do some of that. People will love that. Well, well, tell you what, keep it on ice. We can play it, uh, if the number ever goes back up. No. It's never going back up. I know. Google has already done all it can to strangle brand new and small creators on the platform by raising the requirements to make money, to lowering discoverability and support for new creators, YouTube has become an increasingly more difficult place to come into at an entry level. The idea of growth on the platform for many creators is a fucking joke. This is reinforced by the different and arbitrary ways in which YouTube's rules and community standards are applied. Huge channels have publicly broken the rules many, many, many times and got on a slap on the wrist at best. Even hate speech has been protected by Google before, or at Based. At least remonetized after a token show of demonetization. There is only one rule on YouTube. Be popular already. I say this to say that I genuinely don't see a future for this channel at all. Don't get me wrong, my channel and my career are two different things, and the channel itself ain't going anywhere. Not by my choice anyway, but it's a little more than a shelf on which I display my wares now. Again, that's how it should be. Like, literally, I, this is how I do it with my streams. Like, I put it on YouTube because that's the most accessible platform for a lot of people. I've tried others, and I know that people choose to watch videos in a billion, trillion different formats, and uh, you can't cater to all of them on a smaller platform. You just can't. You need YouTube because YouTube has high-quality videos. It has low-latency streaming. It has multiple levels of qualities so that you can watch on 480p if you're mobile. You can, like, you can watch a video in any way you want on YouTube. And that's why people use it. And then they can, f then Google's fucking machine algorithm will know a million other videos that you want to watch too. Um, that, that's why people use it. And it's like, yeah, you should be using it as a way to outreach to find new people, so that you can take those people and say, hey, by the way, I, I you know, I'm doing other shit that actually is important to me. Um, and that's, you know, the whole, the whole reason why I even talk on these streams is because I wanted, I needed at a certain point in 2019, I think even 2018, I realized that if I just kept on my little hidey hole and I did my forum and I, I, you know, suffered in silence, nobody would ever give a fuck and nobody would ever know like the bullshit that I put up with to keep that side up. It's like, I have to find some way to tell people just how much shit I eat on a daily basis. So it's like, no, you should always, YouTube is, is, is fleeting. It's, it's, you know, momentary. It should be a stepping stone to something more solid because YouTube itself is like fickle and retarded and ran by a Polish woman. It, it, it's, it's not your friend. This is nothing I've made a secret of in the past, and it's been evident for a while. YouTube is, unfortunately, still the best place to put videos, but viewing the platform itself as my career is, well, look at the situation. Even if I wanted to make YouTube my career, it would be a bad, bad, bad fucking business move. It always has been and always will be. I said years ago, and by years ago, I mean almost half a decade ago, that without something like Patreon... See what I mean? He only uses, like, uh, stock footage of, like, women. I think they're very specifically, he looks through the stock footage and he picks out, or, or Justin does, 
and he picks out the women that he wants to be transbians with. And it's it makes sense when you think about it that way. What what videos he picks. You're not to pack this up already because it would have been completely fucking unviable. Back then I was told I was being melodramatic for stating such things, but it's fucking true. The copyright strikes are an absolute plague now, to the point where anyone relying on ad revenue is absolutely terrified to step out of line and attract the attention of corporate interests. To avoid both copyright and bad language that would put off advertising. People are butchering their content, self-censoring. All the things the gamers usually rail and rally against is being done constantly by content creators to themselves to stop bots from claiming their ad revenue or demonetizing their content. Because you gave them consent to. There used to be people who spoke out against this, but then you called them transphobes and had them banned. So now you're stuck, Jim. You banned everyone who would take your side on these issues, and you're all by your fucking lonesome with multinational corporations serving up your ass to fucking ad rev. Deal with it. Even self-styled free speech activists will mind their language when money's on the line because YouTube is increasingly becoming like network television, something it's wanted for years. Content creators have to appease advertisers like they're on TV. Except number a blessed handful are paid like it. The burnout and the mental health issues faced by content creators, many of them far younger than me. Far younger than me getting burnt the fuck out. I mean, it's... This place is a hellhole. Now more That's than retarded. Like, you can just take a break. If you don't, if you don't, like, I understand that, the, like, there's financial repercussions for taking a break from YouTube or whatever, but, I mean, if you're that burned out, just take a break. I've done it before. I try to stream consistently every Friday, but I take breaks when I, it's like, I don't feel like it, <laughs> you know? Why force your, why, this is something I'll never understand. I realize that there are some things in life you have to do. You have to come to terms with, like, paying taxes and dealing with the federal government and dealing with all this shit that you don't want to fucking deal with and you just got to fucking deal with it and that's growing up but when it comes to your job like most people have a choice most people are not slaves you if you don't like something you know do something else your life is 700,000 hours long that's it 700,000 that is your entire life that is 80 years so why the fuck would you spend 40 of that every week doing something you don't want to fucking do? Like, I, I don't know. Just for the love of fucking God, if you hate it that much, do something else. Never, however, the reliance on income and work outside of YouTube.com is important to me, not just from a financial standpoint, but from a personal fulfillment one. I've never had a single positive experience working on YouTube as a platform. Not one. Every email I've received from YouTube, I've dreaded because I don't expect good things. They're never good things. I expect to be told a new video is blocked or has been taken down or that I'm under threat or that YouTube has made another dramatic change that impacts the lives of creators but nobody was warned about. I've never received a good email from YouTube before. Nothing with positive news, not unless it's telling me a video's gone back up, but even then it's only because I got one telling me it had been taken down. Even the mechanical process of uploading a video is annoying, broken, and fucking annoying. At least on Twitter. You know, I get emails, I get nice emails from, from YouTube. They're like, hey, we're interested in the opinions of 0.5% Ashkenazi Jewish people. Would you like to participate in the survey? And I would say, sure, I'd love to participate in the story, the survey. And then they email me back a week later and say, uh, sorry, we don't actually want to proceed with talking to you. <laughs> Twitch, a platform riddled with its own problems, I can claim I've had fun. At least on Patreon, a platform riddled with its own problems, I can say I made money. On YouTube, I've had nothing but stress, fights, expensive lawsuits, harassment both from communities and corporations, and now I'm watching subscribers drop on a platform that's been miserable for me specifically because I became happy in my personal life. That is just... Well, it's... Perfect. Really? Very much like getting to almost a million subs and then rapidly declining. It's it's just a very Jim Sterling way to go. It's perfect. Hello? Is anybody there? 
<laughs> oh. Can you can you hear me? Oh my god. What's the secret word that we can say in chat? Say um say gamergate. That's relevant in 2021. I'll I'll know that nobody that people can hear me if I'm saying if we see gamergate in chat. <laughs> Where is it? I haven't seen it. Oh god. Oh god, chat is fucking great. Okay, perfect, excellent. I see the, I see the gamer gates. Gamers are rising up again. Let us continue. Let me start oh I should have been recording that too. Um ay, 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 ay. What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? Come here <laughs> Help! What the fuck is playing? Is it this? Oh, no! <laughs> I, le I legit do not know where that's coming from. It's still playing on my end. I can't make it stop. Oh, it's library. Library just started playing my last stream in the background. Okay. This is this is a certified disaster. <laughs> ah, how embarrassing. Anyways. So there's this guy called Jim Sterling. <laughs> He's really fucking fat. <laughs> Hello everyone, Laura K Buzz here, Laura Kate Dale, and I am just sending this message to congratulate my good, good friend, James Stephanie Sterling, on finally dropping below 900,000 subscribers on YouTube. You're on your way to the top by going down, and I am here to congratulate you for that. Very few could have done what you did, and I am incredibly proud of my friend. That, um, this is Laura Kate Dale. This is the person that Jim Sterling does their podcast with. And this is the um, very famous Twitter author who posted a picture of them in a, a hospital gurney looking really fucked up on drugs saying, I have a vagina. So if you're wondering who this person is, that, that's them. We've been waiting for, so fair warning. Oh, is this it? Oh, wait, no, it's not. Quite a bit of transphobia now. So look, let's come down to brass fucking tax. Oh, I didn't even notice that. It was so quiet. I was probably playing Apex Legends when I heard this. So this is the moment you've all been waiting for. This is going to be talking about transphobia. I've been waiting for, so fair warning. I've been waiting for. I've felt quite a bit of transphobia now. So look, let's come down to brass fucking tax. There are many reasons to not like my content. I admit that. You can grow tired of the format or get sick of hearing about the subject. Some people take breaks from my work because of mental health reasons, and I totally get that. This show can be depressing. But the fact of the matter is this. I did indeed lose 2,000 subs at once the exact day I wore a fucking wig and lipstick to work and did- Okay, what is more depressing? That A, Jim Sterling makes content that he- that his viewers tell him, his avid- his avid, most beloved, most trusted viewers tell him are psychologically damaging to- to them and he doesn't care and keeps making them. Or B, being so frail and pathetic that talking about transphobia can can burn you out and cause you to crash into slumber, Christian style. Vote A or B now, chat. I'll let the video play, I'll, but I'll just keep an eye. Did every single video post since. Only recently has the exodus slowed down, first simmering to about a thousand losses per video, and in the past couple of weeks, slowing further to around a thousand lost for the whole week. God knows what this one's gonna do to the numbers. I personally expected to take a bigger hit up front and be done with the bleed out before now, but I failed to take into account that aforementioned issue of YouTube never showing my fucking videos to people. I mean, I still have subscribers, viewers, saying, oh, the wig's new? What's up with that then? And it's not their fault. Some of them have even asked. Uh, I think chat decided that B was more pathetic, being the type of person to crash into slumber over Jim Sterling videos.
Uh, we also de- debunked, we very thoroughly debunked the whole, oh, my wig caused me to lose subscribers, because no, that fucking, you were going downhill before then, like, measurably so. It's like, like, are you still uploading? Yeah. For some reason. As far as I'm concerned, the regular drip loss of 2,000 people shows how hard it's been for my subs to even see my videos, as clearly each week another couple thousand of them see my new look and fuck off. Seeing where we are now and where we were, it would appear tens of thousands of people fled the channel because I came out as a trans feminine envy, and that's well, that is fine on one level. Plenty have told me not to worry about it, that it's no big loss if a bunch of transphobes fuck off, but it's disappointing that so many people drew the line at my happiness. That nightmare creatures such as the cornflake homunculus or pog fucker were okay, but my being trans isn't. Because those were funny. Like, okay, like this is funny too, but this is funny for the wrong reason. The, the cornflakes homunculus thing was funny. It, it was actually, I'll, I'll give him this. The fucking him taping a bag of cornflakes over his face and making pained, agonized noises while wearing a trash bag. In case you don't know what the skit was, he dressed up like this with a bag of cornflakes over his head. He wore a trash bag and he would thrash around with the box on his arm making horrific noises. And that was genuinely his best skit because it would come out of nowhere and before it overstayed its welcome, it was fucking over. That, that's, that's comedy. It's all about timing. And it's like when half the fucking AVGN video is dedicated to Bugs Bunny getting shit on, it's not funny. But when the, the fucking cornflakes thing happens and it's three seconds long and it's, it's like a punchline and it's funny. Um, the, the, the wig thing has been going on for months and it was funny the first time and now it's just sad and you take it off and end the skit, Jim. That it was okay to wear wigs and costumes and makeup when I was portraying anything other than myself. And I need to push back against the sub losses here, not because it explicitly matters on its own, but because it puts pay to the ridiculous idea that people transition for the sake of their careers because... Jesus fucking Christ, do you know what a ridiculously stupid career move that would be for me? To come out as trans on YouTube in front of hardcore gamers. The same people that don't even want an NPC off to the side in a game to be trans, let alone anyone front and center. And have you seen how hostile the world is to trans people? Anyone coming out because they think it will help their career is a fucking imbecile. I knew what was going to happen when I came out, especially me. I'm old and nowhere near as pretty as some people. There was no way I was ever going to be acceptably trans for the wider nerd culture to accept. I mean, to be fair, Jim Sterling looks like the average British woman. Except that's a very fucking slim margin as well. And when I say accept, I never mean fully accept all the way. And I already knew that among all my controversial videos and hot takes, nothing ever drew ire to my channel like videos that even passingly mentioned trans issues. Look at the response to my criticisms of transphobia in Deadly Premonition 2, or the sheer hate that got piled onto me for criticizing a game literally called, T, I'm not gonna say it, Gladiator. People got pissed that I wouldn't say it. They were like, why won't you say it? Why do you censor it in the video title? Like, they really wanted me to say it. People want to say it so much youtube is notoriously hateful is that is that a reference to the n-word this is new territory for me by the way i cut out about 19 minutes in trans gladiator oh it wasn't even the n-word that's less funny of trans people and by coming out i was putting my head in a fucking fire and anyone debating that is also a fucking idiot or deliberately bloody ignorant since coming out i've been the subject of all manner of ridiculous rumors assumptions and frankly grotesque and invasive discussions i've also noticed the perception shift among some of my own fans people who have told me they went off me not because of coming out but because my content and persona completely changed afterwards and i'm like Fucking what? I was trans before I came out and literally Cringe. nothing about the show changed except Cringe. some videos now have multiple topics per episode. No, 
literally when when Jim came out or right before then, that's when he completely redid his studio. That's when he changed his logo. That's when he changed up the podium. And when he started doing the fucking editing, which is just awful. All of that's new and all happened at once. So it's not even like there's an A-B testing to see what was the change after, you know, before and after a specific thing because it all happened at once. It could be any combination and it was a combination of things. Like the editing to me is the worst thing. I could probably still listen to this idiot and watch the videos if not for how utterly seasick they made me but is anthology trans tranthology i just came up with that one on the fly <laughs> and they and they want to unsubscribe it is surreal to see myself talked about as if i've died when i feel more alive than ever to Press be F viewed chat. as an alien version of jim sterling when i feel more like me than i ever did Hell, I've even seen people say they miss things that I still do, all since coming out. And on that note, Boston's favorite song can be heard wherever bad podcasts can be found. But of course, those who have never met a trans person or- Oh, what the fuck was that? He has another podcast? Boston's favorite son? What the fuck? I've never even heard of this. I don't even want to know. It's probably about wrestling. Well, they that. face love to suggest it's really easy to come out and then let the. Okay, fine, fine. Give me. I'll pull it up. I'll let this play and I'll pull it. So-called internet points roll in because it'll boost your career. Newsflash, you fucking idiots! Trans people are in trouble, and anybody coming out visibly these days is asking to have their career opportunities limited and their experience of oh. prejudice sharply increased. For doctors to treat them differently. The most to be looked at differently, to be talked about differently. I've experienced that's 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 such such bullshit <laughs> that people that you lose opportunity. Me, uh, uh, okay. Granted, I don't know. Like, I'm not trans. Thank fucking god. I'll never have to experience what that what the process is after the transitioning. But like. I, I can't imagine that people that you lose money like you can you can make so much fucking money by being a token look at look at people on on Twitter who are like their only thing is that they're trans and they're conservative and that's all it fucking takes for people to throw money at them well right, whatever Boston's favorite son Jim and Conrad have a friend named Jonathan who was once famous for being on road rules and will be again They'll make sure of it. A podcast about fame and fortune. You're a little unhappy with how your levels look. What? Were you the designer on Croc and the Legend of... I just come on in just thinking, ooh. What the fuck is this? Come on. No. 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 No, that doesn't line up with how I remember things. Oh, yeah? No, how, how, no. how do you remember it? I remember Road Rules Northern Trail. Oh, yeah? And then is I this seen... A, is this a wrestling thing? What the fuck is Road Rules? Well, I'll search this and then I'll move on. But, like, for real, what the fuck is this? A diverse group of five or six people in their late teens to mid-twenties are chosen to travel together in an RV, completing missions in order to receive a handsome reward. Each season's trip takes place in a different region. An MTV reality show. That's, uh, look, okay, look, I have no fucking idea what this podcast is about, and I have zero interest in it. I have negative interest in it. I would rather listen to Jim Sterling bitch about trannies and, and transphobia for another 10 minutes. It's all these things already quite a bit, and I've only been public a few months. After coming out, people get treated completely differently. Not just like they've had a change, but like they are a completely new person, a different identity altogether. Even if they themselves haven't actually changed all that much except for becoming more happy and alive. The very idea that coming out in front of gamers on YouTube would benefit my career in games media in any fucking way is absurd. It's beyond absurd. It's pure moon logic. In America, there are multiple states where you can get away with literally murdering trans people on the basis of you panic. 
Okay, no, this. The gay trans panic defense, what it is and how to end it. If you are in a certain state or certain states and you bring home a foxy lady, right? You think, ooh, I'm, I'm drunk. And this person named Lilith, they look good to me. Let's take them home. And then, you know, you get them naked and they have a dick. Uh, you are allowed to have a spack attack and murder them in cold blood. And that is a legal defense um, because... Uh, it's like a sexual assault thing. You're allowed to defend yourself in a sexual assault situation. Uh, and Jim's bitching about that. King over their transness. When some snotty little cis boy asks me, oh, what rights don't trans people have? The literal right to not be killed is one of them. In the UK, my country of origin, the so-called gender critical movement has reached such a position of power that it is influencing government oppression of trans people. The invasive, gatekeeping, utterly inhumane treatment of trans people in the UK medical field is downright criminal. While gender critical leaders openly call for violence against trans people, funded of course by evangelical right-wing hate groups. You may have heard the word TERF before, trans-exclusionary <laughs> radical feminist. Despite originally loving the term, most TERFs try and claim it's a slur now. It's not a true name for them, really, because they're so regressive and outright harmful to cis women as well as trans that the word feminist shouldn't be anywhere near them. But whatever- Why? Why? I know, I know a lot of TERFs because of the forum. I cannot think of a single a single issue that a turf has ever brought up that was like that would be damaging to cis women ever. I mean, I guess some of them like subscribe to like homesteading philosophies, but I don't know. That's that's just bullshit. That's moon logic. You call them they are unhinged. Scarily so. They are obsessed with trans people. It's not just JK Rowling and it's not just Graham Linehan, although fuck those two turfy wankers. There are loads of people whose Twitter timelines are just full of arguments against trans people. It's they think about trans people more than trans people do. They report everyone's innocuous tweets to Twitter to try and get rid of them. Like they are, they want all trans people just gone. And He's complaining that uh, TERFs and whatever will report, um, like, trans Twitter accounts that say, like, we should lock all women up in, like, breeding barns and make them suck girl dick. That would be base. They report that, and then they get banned, and then they cry about it. You know, folks like J.K. Rowling get the support and the pity of so many people in entertainment, while the TERFs work to increase their political power, of which they have a scary, terrifying amount. It's become something of a grim, bitter joke in trans communities that you have to research a British comedian to find out if they want you dead or not. But you do. You do. Uh, John Cleese spent the weekend making jokes about trans people on Twitter. Because the UK media establishment is so... It gets to you, trans comedians on transphobia and cancel culture. Oh fucking transphobic. And that's the country I was planning to flee to if things in America truly got too shit. But I've got trans friends in the UK who are actually trying to flee the country because it hates them so much. In fact, someone made news for getting asylum status in New Zealand from the UK because of its transphobia. I swear to God, you've, you've, fucking british people you saw what was happening and you thought we're gonna be ultra transphobic now just so that you have to keep jim sterling in the united states this is a british conspiracy they will pick whatever ph philosophy political position you know geopolitical position despite me personally it is a conspiracy from the british to fuck with me there's nowhere for me to run. They started out complaining about trans people using public bathrooms, but over the years have revealed what they really want and always have wanted, trans people dead. Plain and simple. The more dead to them, the better. So anyway, here's one of the biggest voices in the so-called gender critical movement, basically proving that in a really shocking and disgusting way. Is it me? Um, had a bit of an idea about the fuck is some this? of the things that you can do. And then, for once, I'm talking to you. I'm talking about you dads who maybe carry, I think that's what you say. Uh, I'm so Based. done with the American lingo. Maybe you carry, maybe you don't. 
Uh, maybe you consider yourself a protector of women. Maybe you're that sort of man. Um, maybe you have a daughter or a mother or a wife. Uh, maybe you have a sister. Maybe you just have some friends. Maybe you just think women are human and you don't need any absolute collect connection with them to feel compelled to protect us. Um, I think you should start using women's toilets, men. That's what they think of us, by the way. That's how they see us. That's what they want. They want dead trans people because they think we're disgusting. And that's the world I walked into. Okay? In both the UK... I think, I think the joke is that if you're like an armed man, like you're a rugged armed man, you should be using women's restrooms so that if there's like a sexual assault happening with like a trans person there, you can shoot them. And uh, I think that's a joke, but... Um, whatever. W whatever reason to be offended and cry, I guess. See us, that's what they want. They want dead trans people because they think we're disgusting. And that's the world I walked into. Based. Okay? In both the UK and US, the laws and bills are being put in place to legislatively end transness. From making the healthcare treatment of trans youth a felony, to forcing kids to have their genitals inspected before they can play sports, I shit you not, Okay, people brought this up. I would like to explain to you what the gentle, the penis inspection day is. Penis inspection day is when there is already a reason to believe that a kid is in fact an imposter and they are acting sus. The, the emergency meeting is called and then the coach will say, I want this kid's penis inspected pronto. And they'll send the kid off to the doctor and then the doctor will write a note about the physical genitalia and say, yes, it in fact has a penis. And it will be a general practitioner and it is not the coach. Penis inspection day is a medical thing. It is not a coach and the, the boy thing. The invasion of trans bodies and the legislative genocide attempts are so frequent as to be completely exhausting. Unless you're following it, you cannot appreciate just how endless and daily the attacks on trans people are. Systemic ones. And it's not just TERFs. It's the governments and communities these TERFs have managed to infiltrate and influence. There is shit going on. Let me read that. Legis Remember, this is all new to me. Uh, legislation affecting LGBT rights across the country. No, it's the ACLU bitching about influence. Shit. There is shit. You know, I used to donate to the ACLU when I was like a teenager. I, I set aside, a, when I first got my first job, I decided I was going to donate to, to charity when I uh, started making money. So with my fucking Whataburger checks, I donated like $100 a year to both the ACLU and Wikipedia. And boy, oh boy, <laughs> how times and people change. Going on right now in this country and in the UK and of course many others that is genocidal towards me and mine. That's not hyperbole. They want us gone from culture, and then they just want us gone. And that's what all these bills, all these laws, all these debates, that's what they're here for. It's to normalize our eradication. And far, far, far too many people have proven receptive to that. Bathroom bills, attacks on trans characters in media, celebrities circling the wagon around JK fucking Rowling, the fucking BBC putting out programs about the so-called trans issue while refusing to speak to actual trans people. Our lives are up for debate and we don't get a fucking say in the matter. We're just called an issue. Nothing I can say. You know, it is weird how, like, regressive British people are, specifically about trans issues, and it makes me wonder if it's like the the british nonce hatred is like so so built in they're like so uh god there was that fucking guy like in the 19 late 1990s jimmy seville like if that national tr uh trauma has like built in like nonce detectors in every british people person and, and like they they see trans people like uh-uh Oh, that's sus. That reminds me of Jimmy Seville, mate. I can't have that. We gotta get rid of that. We gotta dump them in America, in, New in the colonies. We gotta dump them in the colonies. Say so in a short video, we'll adequately tell you how scary life is for a trans person, and I'm one of the safer ones. It's scary, folks. People want me and mine dead. Gone. 
forgotten and hidden away at best, outright murdered at worst. In my home country and my adopted country, lawmakers are trying to eradicate us, silence us, keep us out of public view. They want us gone. Those in control of pretty much everything want us buried. And you think I chose this life for a laugh? For my career? For points on the fucking Twitters? No. Idiot. I chose it to live. And as a trans person, that means fighting for my fucking life. <laughs> Please like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> When I came out as non-binary and I put on the wig, the wig was, I did not put on the dollar store wig. The wig chose me. And it's my duty to all the trans people, all the trans boys and girls of all ages living here and in the UK. I have to fight for them. I have to be my true original self or else they'll literally die at the hands of the, the Muhammadines of the UK, the, the alt-right Christians there. Truly, truly fucking delude. This is what, is this terminally online? I don't think Jim Sterling's ever left his fucking house except to throw women to the ground in a wrestling ring. I think that that's his entire life is like reading Twitter headlines about shit. And his entire world perspective is based on that. Hi everyone, Jonathan Holmes here with a special announcement. Jim Stephanie Sterling has a new crowning achievement. They have done it. They have finally gotten under 900,000 subscribers on YouTube. What? What does that mean? How is that good? You're probably asking yourself, well, Jim Stephanie is smarter, stronger, and healthier than they've ever been before. The quality is this man black, Asian, Hispanic, white, Native American? He's, he's at least 56% white, I'll guess that. I have no fucking idea who this is, by the way. Their work is at an all-time high, and yet their subscribers are going down. Why could that be? Well, it could only be for one reason. People who don't like good things, in fact, are shitheads, are leaving the subscriber count. They're taking off. Those He's salty too. Knuckle dragon, jackboot, ass crack fucks. Oh my! He's like trying. He's like trying to like be angry because Jim said like, "Can you give me like a like a stern talking to video to all the people who unsubbed? Kind of like sound get some piss and vinegar in there. Be angry." And this man is like fifty six percent white, fifteen percent Asian, fifteen percent black. Uh, and then he is like, what, what's the remainder? 14%? He's 14% pure, unadulterated phytoestrogen from Soylent. And he just can't. He, he can't raise his voice in anger. He's unable to. He's got a mental handicap. He only knows how to appreciate trans women for their natural beauty. <laughs> Taking a walk. And you know what? Good riddance to him. That's me talking. Jim Stephanie probably wants to keep people happy and watching their videos but i don't care i can tell you if you're leaving jim stephanie's channel because they are healthier happier and stronger smarter than ever then you're a piece of shit and you can take a hike back to you i can't emphasize enough that i just asked for a congratulations video for laugh thank you jonathan from jonathan from road rules don't you guys want to hear a podcast with this guy you, jesus jim stephanie Is he gonna cry? You gonna cry? You know, I had some other. He's gonna cry. Look at that. He's tearing up. Look at that. He's holding back tears. <laughs> you know, I had some other stuff to close out with, but I think I'll just say that I'd rather have happiness than a rank on a social blade website. Uh, anything else to add from you, celebrity host Beanie Tuesday? Where could we see you next? Hopefully somewhere better than this. Classless. Classless. Thank God for me. Classless. I thought you are better than that. I thought you are better than that. I thought my agent was better. Comedy. Special thanks to Conrad Zimmerman of Fit Shark Marketing for booking the services of Beanie Tuesday. I'm guessing that's the wee little midge.
And Tuesday would like to remind his fans he is not associated with the Jimquisition in any way and will not be adding to his show reel. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that is the video. Um, I, I have thoroughly enjoyed watching this with you guys. Thank you for joining me on short notice to uh, partake in the fruits of Jim Sterling's downfall and tragedy. Um... For whatever reason, Jim hears this, I would tell him to, you know what, just quit. Like, if you're that unhappy with everything in your life, just fucking quit. I would say stop trying to be like a woman, but I think we're past that point. So just dive into it. But, I mean, it's his money, like, right? How are you going to tell someone to quit? To, like, how much money is he making? I'll pull this up. I didn't look at this before. Patreon, the Jimquisition. Here we go. Jim is making... Dun, 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 dun. Can he be any fucking slower? Seven, 7,677 patrons, $14,617. You know what, Jim? I changed my advice. Milk these fucking retards for everything they're worth. Because um, they're worth very little, and it might as well be your money. And when you get that money, um, I don't know, buy, buy Hasbro, buy the Hasbro division that owns Boglins and just make your own model Boglins after yourself and make, make Boglin silver coins. Cause fuck it. These people are retards and they deserve to be built. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that is all. I will uh, make sure that this gets up on. Uh, I'll have to edit it because there's that fucking me losing internet in the middle of the middle of the the stream. Uh, but I'll get it up on Spotify and library and shit today. And I'll see you on Friday. Um, I'm glad that this was as funny as it was because it was everything that I hoped it would be. And uh, yep, that's it. Bye bye. Must